right, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We're zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question that wants to zoom in and focus in on what does projection mean? What does it mean when a narcissist or somebody who is malignant, toxic, someone who is controlling, a meshment and boundary violation who uses that on a routine or consistent basis, what does it mean when someone is engaging in projection? So I think that's a great viewer question and it's very important to understand this so you can understand and distinguish a little bit of separation between you and a toxic malignant individual. Malignant meaning there's some pathology, there's some insecurity, there's something going on that's causing this aberrant behavior this sort of disordered behavior that is chronic, ongoing, and it, it's pretty consistent. Um, it's, and it's causing hurt, it's causing damage, it's causing you, you know, to feel uncomfortable, and it's sort of hurting, it's sort of hitting you in your core, hitting you in your heart, hitting you in your self-esteem, and affecting how you're functioning in a negative way. Not enhancing, but deterring from your behavior from your relationship, not only with them, but really carrying on into other areas of your life and it's ongoing. So projection is a psychological concept that was uh, first, I, I feel, described, uh, described by uh, Sigmund Freud. And he looked at the idea that, you know, um, someone who has an insecurity, um, something that they don't feel too hot about, they don't feel too positive about within themselves, for some reason, you know, either something that occurred either in their childhood, their upbringing, or their environment, but there is something that is insecure that that individual has not worked through and come to terms with. So it's an active, uh, it's an active issue ongoing within them, meaning that they haven't processed it within themselves, come to terms with it, and integrated it and incorporated it into their own personal identity. So something that they might feel ashamed about, maybe where they grew up, maybe, um, you know, they had, um, you know, grown up on the wrong side of the tracks or they had trouble in school or they had trouble with their appearance or how they felt about um, their, their family or their background or where they lived or how they were dressing or had their hair or there was something, you know, that was insecure that they that they feel and not only in the past but ongoing it's an ongoing insecurity it could they could be you know have insecurity about their height um, they could have insecurity about their gender they could have insecurity about their relationship with their spouse with their community with their profession it really varies on the individual but there is an active ongoing insecurity and within this person and a narcissist really will engage in a lot of projection. Basically, when there's a there's an existing insecurity within them that rather than them working through it, rather than them processing it, they basically throw their dirty laundry, their insecurity onto other people and they attribute it to a cause outside of themselves, oftentimes an innocent bystander, i.e. an innocent um, individual who oftentimes has no issue, there's no problematic uh, situation with them, but they're projecting their insecurity onto them and stating and also accusing and falsely blaming for that person and attributing that person with the very insecurities that they don't want to deal with. So rather than them taking the time to understand why they might have certain anxieties, depression, sensitivities, awareness, things that they're not too, you know, they have not, they don't feel too positively about within themselves, rather than them come to terms with it, hey, you know, my height is fine, um, my religion is fine, my hair color is fine, the length of my nails is fine, whatever it is, my relationship with my spouse is secure, it's solid, we have, you know, I know that they love me, you know, these are the basis of security and that they have, you know, that they understand and accept these parts within themselves. 
However, some people go on through life and they're completely, you know, they have ongoing repression, ongoing suppression, ongoing anger issues, ongoing insecurities that they have not worked through. And it's easier for them to project and attribute the cause of that insecurity to another individual. So let's say, for example, someone feels that, you know, you're, you're super in shape, you know, you work out, you, you know, you care after what you eat, you get the right sleep, you know, you're working on your physique, you like to feel strong, fit, and you wear shorts. So then the, the narcissist or the individual who is projecting, you know, they, rather than them feeling happy for you, you look great, you take great care of yourself, you know, your workouts are really giving you great results, rather than being able to compliment you, rather than doing this because you're being in shape, you're fit, you know, you're being fit, you're being happy, you're being successful, you know, causing that to give you credit for those attributes and those qualities and those characteristics, rather than being supportive, a narcissist who is threatened by your self-care regimen, who is intimidated by your discipline, um, who is feeling that they don't want you to excel, they don't want you to shine, they don't want you to feel good, strange but true, um, because a narcissist oftentimes they are threatened by other people who might sh outshine them or have a talent or something that is positive, especially you know things like discipline. Um, Things that take a little bit of hard work, ingenuity, stick to itiveness, perseverance, these qualities oftentimes which are hard to come by and hard to, you know, um, maintain through time. And so it's easier, of course, once again, for a narcissist, someone who has an insecurity for them to knock others down because it leaves them looking better. Once again, a narcissist is like a new builder. It's easy for them to have the tallest building in town if they were to knock down everybody else's. So all of a sudden, by default, their building is the tallest. It's got the penthouse. It's got the views. It's going to get the higher rent. So a narcissist, you know, for them, it's easier to cause dismay, negativity, and tr cause to trigger people and cause them to self-sabotage and lose it and lose the discipline and lose that, that gratification that they have earned and that they have attributed to themselves, it's easier for a narcissist to attack that, that quality and go after that and to unravel that and to cause you um, trouble rather than being able to say, you know what, you did that on your own. You've got great discipline. You know, you um, have a better workout routine than I could ever do. You know, you, um, your legs look great. Your arms look great. W w your abs look great. Rather than being able to compliment which oftentimes you won't get a lot of compliments from a narcissist, by the way. They're the ones who, if anything, you know, are going to criticize. They are not one to compliment others. Um, you know, not wanting, they're the first to not want to acknowledge and validate the strengths and good qualities of others because to do so would, would mean that they're on, on equal footing. You know, they're, you're, you're all on evil, you know, you've got a level playing field and that, you know, if they can drag you down, keep you back, hold you back, just by virtue of that one activity, it'll automatically cause them to get ahead. It'll automatically cause them to shine brighter. It'll automatically make them look like a success. If you're angry, upset, crying, raging, all of a sudden they look cool, calm, and collected. They sure look like they've got it together. Do you see? And so they create a problem a projection is very much like a projector or a pro projectile item. You know, it's going out one way very, very quickly. So they're taking those insecurities and they're planting it on another individual, claiming that they have these negative attributes and causing a rip, a struggle, a problem over it. Um, and even when there is no problem, there is no issue, it's, it's false accusations, you know, Eventually, this can then lead to brainwashing and self-doubt and insecurity in the other individual. So they then begin to harbor this insecurity and be able to basically play it out on the fabric and on the screen of their lives 
they're playing out the very issues and working it out for themselves. It's like you're having to clean their dirty laundry for them. You're having to solve their insecurities for them. You're basically becoming a receptacle for their insecurities. You're basically becoming a receptacle for their inner emotional hurts. So, you know, you're, they're basically causing you to do all the work that they never did their emotional work in their own life. So once again, going back to our example, um, so let's just say, for example, you know, and you know, why would you wear shorts like that? You know, is that the message that you want to send to the world that you're so in shape and you're so buff and, you know, and it's just like, um, you know, I'm going on a bike ride, I'm going to the gym, we're going to the beach, whatever it is. And so it's completely normal, natural for you to be wearing shorts. But all of a sudden, here comes somebody who's criticizing you of some wrong, some ill will, some uh, quality or characteristic, which they're, in their eyes, they're reflecting, reflecting is not positive, when actually it's indicative of somebody who's disciplined, you know, who's got their act together, but they're, they're going to cut it down behind the knees right where you live and to cause you the self-doubt. This is gaslighting. This is brainwashing. This is attributing faults where there is none. So once again, like we, you know, the example we used before, it's like ripping somebody a new one. They're attributing a new negative characteristic and causing negative toxic seeds to grow. And so, yeah, toxic means it's becoming uninhabitable. It's dangerous. It's not ingestible. It's too much. Um, and so this insecurity, so for example, you know, um, and then, you know, because this person, the narcissist, might have insecurities, i.e. they don't feel good about within themselves, their physique, their eating patterns, their discipline, their appearance, their body image, the shape of their legs, the shape of their arms, whatever it is, their physical activity level. And they might, you know, what's very interesting is oftentimes after the projection, you'll see them doing the exact same thing, which would they had um, commented about or projected onto you, you'll see them doing the exact same thing. And, you know, it's kind of like when they didn't think you were looking and then you're like, wait a second, they are doing the exact same thing that they had faulted me for. This is projection. You're like a movie projector. If you're running, you know, back in the day, they used to have those old film projectors and then they would put up a screen for them to play the movie on. So you would take up a blank slate or a blank wall and <clears throat> you'd project the movie onto this part of the wall and you'd play it and you'd be able to see the film, watch the film clip, whatever it was, the movie. Just like when you go to a movie nowadays, you know, they're putting a projector up onto a blank screen. So the innocent individual is like a blank slate. They're like the tabula rasa. They're, they don't have this issue. And then they project it on. So it very much like the insecurity then begins to live in them. So for example, once again, for back to our example, you know, I can't believe you're you're wearing those shorts or I can't believe, you know, look at you, you know, da, 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 da. And then next thing you know, it can be a couple of weeks later, a couple of months, even a couple of years, the very fault, you know, they're wearing the the shorts. Their, their priority is for their workouts. What's important to them is, is their eating habits, the fact that they're eating more this than that. In other words, they're faulting you for the very thing that they would like to be strong at and be recognized and validated at, even though it's very dysfunctional to create these, um, these sort of complaints, you know, this projection, um, you know, they're, they just, they start basically to rip into another person just to get a new trigger, you know, and, but then you'll find them doing the very thing that they had faulted you by. They're wearing the shorts, they're modifying the, you know, what's, you know, they'll miss certain events for their workout routine. Um, they will have uh, eating habits that exemplify better health. So rather than naturally, hey, you know, I'm so, it's just amazing that you're, 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 you're playing, um, you know, golf or that you're doing Frisbee or that you're going to work out or you're going for this nice walk. I mean, 
rather than a natural person who is not insecure would say, that is awesome. You know, I'm not threatened by your success. You know, if anything, amen, <clears throat> that you're able to be so disciplined. That's fantastic. You know, rather than being supportive and enthusiastic and knowing how hard it is to keep up this workout routine, you know, um, the narcissist is the one who is um, trying to find faults where and then create this new insecurity and then self-doubt, brainwashing, you know, making you think that you're, um, you know, you're, you're too extreme, you're too intense, you know, why would you, um, you know, you're working out too hard or you're eating too healthy or your outfit, you shouldn't wear that. But then you'll find that they're actually doing the same thing. So you can't really go back and why would you want to perceive more negativity in the world. That's part of the problem is also is that once you're the target of someone's projection, you know, um, then it causes you to become then sensitive to and sort of oftentimes <clears throat> think in judgmental terms like a nar like the narcissist does. And oftentimes people don't want to think, feel and behave more negatively. That is a problem. You know, that makes for an unhappy person. So oftentimes <clears throat> the habit, uh, the projection becomes a habit, meaning habitual, repeated over and over and over again, so much that the people around then pick up this negative habit. They pick up this negative habit like smoking and they'll be like, you know, why would I want to criticize more in the world? You know, isn't that the direction that we want to go away from? So you also have to be careful of poor behavior habits, um, being judgmental, projecting, you know, uh, learning the difference between what I own and need to work on versus what someone owns and the fact that that's who they are and that I appreciate that about this person or um, I enjoy that. I think that that's, I know how difficult that is and I commend that. So be, begin to not only be aware of projection, what this looks like, what this feels like, but also begin to pick up the fact if, if indeed you have, um, be able to see these patterns in the relationship and then do a, a pattern change. Being able to see if there's any poor habits that you have picked up on because of this individual and begin to stop them in their tracks. Begin to acknowledge when you know the cause has created this effect and being able to then think for yourself. You know, begin to become secure in yourself. Begin to understand what security looks like and feels like and is like, a, you know, for you. Know where your security is. Know what positive self-esteem is. Know what it is to value yourself and to value others. To stop the harsh judgment of self and therefore stop the harsh judgment of others. Providing unconditional, you know, get used to accepting unconditional positive self-regard <clears throat> so you can then give that to others. <clears throat> it's very important that you begin to understand, you know, the ripple effects, the, you know, ongoing latent effects of being a victim or a target of projection so that you're not feeling like, you know, you're the, you're not a person who you want to be. You know, ultimately, when you get free and you get on your own, it gives you the freedom and the space and the liberty to become the person you want to be and to be the secure person that you want to be, that you know you are, <clears throat> and practice unconditional positive self-regard, having compassion and empathy for self, developing self-esteem, even if it's not at the hands of an abuser or a malignant narcissist or somebody who's toxic, Begin to separate yourself and have some separateness and distinctness for your own life versus the the problem, the problematic you know person or parties who have created this projection onto you. Being able to clear your own slate. No, that's not true. You know, um, no, I'm. You know, this is my choice to be healthy. This is my choice to be in shape. This is my choice to wear this. You know, this is my freedom of self-expression. So oftentimes it's those very areas <clears throat> of self-expression that are limited, that are constrained, that you, you feel, you know, that you can't be yourself. 
the narcissist oftentimes is going to target the very positives that you have going for you and making sure that those don't live and get stronger and create for your success. So it's really like pulling a lot of the very life chi out of you, which is very, very sad um, that someone would feel a need to do this um, I, in my viewpoint. And I feel for you all if you've had to put up with this. But if you've put up with it, you know, the time is now to say no more. You know, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate this. I understand what projection is. I'm no longer going to be a receptacle for your negativity. I'm no longer going to be, you know, a, uh, a uh, receptacle for your, for your issues. I'm no longer going to operate in this energetic pattern. I'm no longer going to live in this dysfunctional way. It's, it's not, it's not happening. Period. End of story. That's it. You know, no, I will not tolerate it. So it has to be at that level of firmness and commitment. And now that you see it, you know, it's like having a new awareness. You've learned something. You've learned something about, you know, human behavior. You've learned something about your fiance. You've learned something about your family member. You've learned something about your work environment, whatever it is. Make sure it's a lesson learned and don't, it's very difficult to unlearn and unwind a negative habit such as, you know, um, that are instilled in the seeds of projection and make sure you clear the slate and you embrace your strengths and embrace the good qualities and begin to allow those comments just to bounce off because you know that they're not valid. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out.